I'm joking. Okay, so uh, so uh, as I mentioned, the like uh, the ASCII uh, like is denoted by so that means like two by, uh, by eight bits. So that means like uh, two hexadecimals. Okay, that means that each character has its pre-specified hexadecimal notation. In order to get the like uh, the ASCII character for each letter, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use function or and function card. So function or here was, was gonna give us what the, what is the hexadecimal value of a letter A. And if you recall that if we compared a capital letter A to a small letter A, uh, the small letter has more value as such. You know, it's like uh, a, a, a like the string A uh, is always greater than the string A capital. Now uh, the function or takes a character, a string with a length of one, and returns the ASCII code. Now, if we would like to do the reverse, which is like we, if we would like to take the ASCII encoding uh, and returns the corresponding uh, corresponding letters or character, uh, we use the function uh, car or SHR. Okay, and as we can see here, SHR ninety seven is going to give you what the letter A. All right. So, so remember that the string is like it's a list of characters, a sequence of characters delimited by a quotation. So we can use a single quotation or we can use double quotation. But what if, remember, what if like the single quotation is part of our string? So you see that like I would like to, instead of typing I am sick, uh, and here I will do I am sick. So what I'm gonna do, so in my case here, I'm gonna use the double quotation to represent the, the like the string, okay? The string, the string value, and the single quotation here, it can be like encoded without any problem, okay? Sometimes what if we would like to include both of them, the like the single quote and the double quote? In that case, there is no other way except using whatever referred to as, as an escape sequence. The escape sequence is backslash and code quotation. And it indicates that, that the code in our case here is not the string delimiter, but it's a part of the string value. Okay, so as we can see here, when we, we use backslash uh, like a comma, it was what it was included in my in my string without having any issue. Uh, and even the, uh, the print like uh, function interpret the escape sequence. It will not uh, like interpret the escape sequence and print it nicely. So instead of printing backslash comma, the Python understand that this is an escape sequence. As such, it's gonna print just the comma here, okay? Another way is to encode like uh, the like uh, the quotation is uh, like is uh, is using the multi-line string, okay? And in the multi-line string, we are using like something similar to doc string. We're using the triple quotes, and at the triple quotes, if we are not assigning the triple quoted string to anything, it's called doc string. But if we are assigning it to uh, to a variable, it's called what? It's called a multi-line string, okay? So another escape sequence is the backslash n, and this backslash n will tell Python to what? Uh, to print a, like another line, all right? T to print a new line, okay? So if we're gonna evaluate uh, execute here, it's gonna show you what are the escape sequences in the string, but if we're gonna print it, it's gonna translate the backslash n to be considered that it's a new line, and as such, we're starting a new line here. Okay. Now, suppose that you would like to encode a, a, a multi-line with multiple escape sequences to be considered as your string variable. So you have two choices: the brutal force choice okay, or the trial and error uh, choice is to try to say, okay, so like we are starting here a new line 
and after the comma, we're starting another new, uh, like comma and the hyphen, we're starting another new, new line. So to add like backslash N here, and okay, and after B here, a new line, and, and so on. But this approach is time consuming. So what is the best approach is to use the triple quote, okay? So when we're using a triple quote, Python, will insert the escape sequence automatically without, without worrying about the new line or the tab or like the spaces or even like the quotation and the special characters. Okay, now let's take a look at something else. Okay, like remember that we use the indexing operating to what? To access a specific character in the string. And we covered both the positive indexing as well as the negative indexing. Okay, however, we can get a slice from the, uh, from the string using the index operator. In our case, like in this case, instead of just placing one number, we're gonna place a range of numbers. So those range like uh, 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 will have I and J and I indicate positions of the first character and J will indicate the positions that comes the offset of, uh, or before the location of J. So let's take a look at examples here. So from zero to two, that means I'm gonna consider zero and one, that's it. So zero and one will point to what AP, that's why I have a slice of AP. From one to four, that means I'm gonna get one, two and three. So that's why PPL. From two to five, what does that mean? PLE, because two to four. Now, like I don't want to bother myself of uh, like specifying the end of the uh, of the uh, the string, and I want to get a slice starting from the position i, okay, to the end of the string. So what I'm gonna do is just providing the location of the characters of interest. Uh, column and then keep it empty. So from two to five is similar to two to nothing, okay? Now, similarly, we can get the slice of S ending before J. So from nothing to two, that means I'm gonna get something similar to zero to two. So that's why I get A and P. Okay, now in addition to this, so suppose that A is equal that I am, okay, so. Underscore ITI 1120C, okay. Students. Okay. Now, let's play with this. So if I did print, okay, A, zero, double column, this is called extended string. And let's see what's gonna, uh, like what's gonna, what, what will be the output. So if I check the output here, as you can see, what will happen is uh, like Python will skip two characters, okay? So what does that mean? That means it's gonna skip L, uh, so we'll take H, skip E, we'll take L, skip this L, we'll take O, skip this, and take the comma here, like take the space here, and skip I, then we'll take T, and so on, okay? Now, let's suppose that I'm doing something else. So print now, okay, and let me just make sure that, okay, overwrite. Okay, let's, uh, let's remove the spaces so it's gonna be like more clear to you guys. Let's do this, A, and close it, okay? Can anybody tell me what's gonna, what's, what will be the output? Hmm? Gonna reverse it. Reverse, thank you so much. So what will happen here, it's gonna print the string in a reverse order, okay? So you see that? It will start from S T N E D U T S underscore and 
C021111. So this is a good way of printing the string in a backward way, okay? And it, it, like, you know, like it's a good way of, che of checking if the string is a, pa a palindrome or not. You know what's, what does it mean, palindrome string? Palindrome string, Words it's- that can be said forwards and backwards. Exactly, like madame, okay? So Kathleen, what's, what's your question? We're gonna have the question at the end. What's your question? Um, what's the like practical use of this? Like, yeah. The practical use of the slice? Yes. Yeah. If we would like to get a portion of you our string, or if you would like to manipulate piece of the string. Okay? So like, suppose that I would like to ask you if to define a function, that function return a true if the string, if the input string is palindrome or not. So what you're gonna have, what you're gonna do is as the following. So you have to like, you know, uh, like this, define uh, PL and S, okay? And after that, what we're gonna do is, okay, we will do s if s is equal to s, okay, minus one, return two. Okay. And else return false. Do you need the colon on the if statement too? Amazing. So let's test that. Okay. Now, pal. Down. Pal. Kathleen. All right. So you see that, Kathleen? Uh, Kathleen? So we define the function that will check if the string is palindrome or not simply by using the extended string, okay? Now let's go back here and let's say print this one. Okay, so this is specifying the end of the string. This is the starting point of the string, the ending of the string, and this is the step size, okay? So as you can see, we have taken H, we escape E, and then we've taken like uh, uh, L, then we escape the another L, and we we've taken uh, O, okay? Now, if I make it three, okay, so as you can see three, we're gonna escape two items. Okay, so we escape E, L, and we'll take this L. Okay, and we're gonna skip O and, and the underscore, and we're gonna take the I, okay, and so on. Okay, so I believe that I have covered the, the string, the slices properly. So uh, let's move to a slice. Also can be used to obtain a portion of the list, okay? So if we would like to write a Python expression using the indexing operation. So as we can see here, we take an A, B, C, and D. So that's it, we stop from here. So this can be done by, by specifying from zero to the location of E, which is one, one, two, three, four, okay? So we will take from zero to three, okay? So as you can see that. Now, D, E, F, so D, E, F, so the D here starts from position three and will end up at position six. That's why 
We can use the regular indexing, or we can obtain a slice of just one item. So if we sit at the, uh, the item that comes right before four, which is the three, that's why we got this is minus one, minus two, and this is minus a three. So by starting from minus a three to minus one, I'm going to get what F and J, OK? And here is from like D to the to the end of the string, so I don't need uh, to the end of the list, so I don't need to specify what to specify the end. And here is F J H, so it's from minus three, like you know uh, the methods or the functions to alter the uh, like uh, the uh, value of the string and save it into another variable. So let's take a look at some examples here, okay? Where is that? So, so only some of the commonly used string methods are shown, not all of them. So since strings are immutable, none of these method mutates the string, okay? So the method uh, count and the method find returns an integer. So what's the integer? It's the you know, like it's the, uh, the, the number of the occurrence of the targeted in the string S. And find will return the index of the first occurrence of the target in S. So the target here. So remember, like, you know, in the, uh, like in the assignment, uh, in the S uh, non-negative uh, float, I told you you can use the find method. So the find method can be used to specify if there is a float point or not. Okay. Now method split retains what a list of substring of S delimited by the separation that you are specifying. So I'm going to give you an example of that. Okay. And the remaining methods are usually modifying the uh, copy of the string S. So upper will return the lower uh, like uh, lower case of S. Uh, and strip will return a copy of S without, uh, without leading and trailing white space, OK? So let's take a look at this example, OK? So S split and by like uh, using the separation, uh, specifying what's the separation index. So let's suppose that we have, you know, this is the text, OK? That's our string. And we use the method dot split. Now remember, because here the target is the string itself, we have to use the object type dot and reference the method, okay? So dot split, what's gonna happen? It's gonna return, return a list and that list uh, will contain the items that are separated by a space. So, because we did not specify anything here, okay? So. What's, so it's going to have this, it's going to have is the text, OK? Now, here we specified that the, 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 the delimited separation is the comma and the dot here, OK? So what will happen here is I'm going to separate my items based on that. So I'm going to take two, forget about this, OK, and we'll take three and forget about this and we'll take five and forget about this and so on. OK, and the method is like split is very useful to be called on a string in order to obtain a list of words in that string. OK, now there is another two imp like like two important methods, useful methods, uh, which are the translate and the make trans. And it's used to replace certain characters in the string with other based on a mapping of characters to characters. Such a mapping is constructed using a special type of string method that is called not by the string object, but by the string class uh, str itself. So what does that mean? So that means, OK, let me give you an example. So suppose that, OK, uh, we have A, B, C, D, and we have here, like you remember, like so Mac, make a trans will return a table of Mac mapping uh, uh, characters in the string old to the characters in the new. 
So we have old and new. So if I have, okay, well, if I run like str make a trans, and I have this is the old and this is the new string, okay. And then after that, I'm gonna like you know use the string translate. So the trans the translate return a copy of s in which the original character are replaced using the mapping this uh, the mapping described by the table that I made by the making chance. So what does that mean? A will be mapped with u, and D b will be mapped with v, and uh, f will be mapped with what, guys? With z. So if I have fat, okay? So fat, I will map it to F to Z and A to U and, L, uh, and D to what, guys? T to X here, okay? So desktop dot translate table. Now here, now guys, see that I don't have the T and I don't have the O and I don't have the P as well as the K. So what will happen here, that what will happen is whatever I uh, defined in the, like, you know, in the make a translation method uh, will be considered and any characters that I did not have be not modified. So as you can see, okay, D for the D, it's gonna be X for E, it's gonna be what? E, I have it here as a Y, and for the S here, I don't have S in my mapping, therefore I'm gonna place it itself. And then K, do I have K here? No. So, and T, O, P, it will be considered itself. So I only mapped two characters, okay? Now, let's suppose guys, that we need to pick up the date and time component of the string. So like I suppose that we have that this is a string. This string has the date as well as the what the like the time. So that string event will specify the date as well as the time. Now if I <coughs> would like to punctuate it using <coughs> Using the split is going to be too difficult. Why? Because the separated, I have multiple separated uh, delimiters. I have the comma, I have the space, and I have the two hyphen. So what should I do? The solution is to replace the punctuation with the blank spaces using what? Using the, you know, the make it trans. So the make it trans is, so what, like, as you can see, if I have the uh, make a trans as well as the translate method, okay? I hope it's like, it's a clear because it's very simple, you know, like we have the old and the targeted one. So what's the old string that I have? The old string, okay. The column, the comma, and the hyphen. And I'm gonna replace them by what? I'm gonna re replace them. Each one of them, I'm gonna replace them by one space, okay? That's why I concatenate the empty space three times. So the hyphen will be replaced by a space, the comma will be replaced by a space, and the column will be replaced by a space. Therefore, when I encounter the comma here, I replace it by a space. When I encounter the comma here, I replace it by a space. When I encounter the two hyphen here, I replace it by what? By two spaces. Okay, and that's it. All right, so remember that, question? what? Okay, at the end, at the end, at the end. You asked me at the end. Uh, so just record like what is the name of the slide and I will go back to it. Remember that function print, take zero or more arg arguments and print them in the shell, okay? So like when I said what, like zero or more arguments because here, I was capable to print prod, cost, weight, and total, okay? Now, print them exactly is not the case because you remember that if we have once, that escape sequence, if it tells us the unified code or if it tells us the, uh, like, you know, if it tells us a, a new encoded uh, language, let's take a look at this. 
you know, it will not print exactly whatever encoded between the codes. It will print them in a nicely understandable way. We're gonna understand the, 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 like the difference between the string representation and the string in the object-oriented uh, lesson or class. However, for now, just understand, guys, you know, when we like use the print, it doesn't need to be necessarily equal to whatever I uh, like, you know, evaluated my string, okay? Is that clear? So if you remember that the print always return a type of none, and it's different than the str class. Now, in general, we can use the argument separate some string uh, to the like you know like uh, to be added to the function print in order to like uh, to insert it between uh, those arguments. So let's take a look at this example. Okay, so here by default what a blank space uh, separator is printed between the arguments. Now, let's suppose that I would like to, instead of printing a blank space, I would like to print what? Like the notation, okay? Like a comma and a space, okay? So this will give me a customized separator. And as such, you can see that when I print it, like uh, each one of them, like um, uh, models, then I what, I, you know, like I separated by this comma and the space and so on, okay? And pay attention to the fact that when you print the string, you're gonna strip the code and whatever inside it that is encoded, you know, or like using the UTF or encoded using a separate sequence, it will be like, removed and translated directly into your, like into the shell okay uh, so by default function print add a new line after printing each argument so like when you take a look at this string and we use the four and we iterate over the items in that string what's going to happen is i'm going to print bow and then what it will add a new line this one by default there is like a backslash n by default here and well, print cat and a new line dot. But suppose that I would like to what to print them in like in the same line. So here I will override the backslash n, which is the default escape sequence, and by specifying the and therefore. Here, when I like when I said end, remember like the end equal some string is added to the argument to be printed. Okay, and what will happen is since we did not specify explicitly that we have a new like uh, like a, a new line, all of them will be printed on the same line as well as will be separated by the comma. Okay, now. Let's take a look at this. Here, we change the, like, you know, the end, end is equal to what? To a three exclamation mark and a space. Okay, if we wanna, like, print each time, instead of a space, a new line, we have to add backslash n. Or for a tab, we have to add what? Like, back, like uh, backslash t. We can use the F string, which is a special type of string letter that is prefixed by the letter F. And the F is used to format the output of your string. So suppose that I said F, print F, hello world. It's, it will do nothing. It just will print you the hello world. Now, let's suppose that I said F, hello, and curly brackets inside its name. And that's it. So what will happen is, because I encode it by, by the F string here, the name will be evaluated. And since I have Johnny, so it's gonna print hello Johnny, okay? Now, this can be very useful 
to, okay, to round the numbers as well as print them in a nicely way. So like we have this and we have a lot of numbers and I just wanna print like two positions, okay? So I'm gonna say num, number, F, like, you know, F to specify that this is a specified type of formatted string and dot two F, that means I'm gonna take round the value to two decimal places, okay? And will as what guys, and display the floating number here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take four and five and print the number itself, which is one, two, and three, okay? So let's take another like nicer example. So we have like uh, the F, the number is, so that the number is will be printed, okay? Now let's take a look at 12. So 12 means the what guys? The field width. So what is the field width here? So here it's a 12. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the spaces and one, two, three. So I'm gonna add one, two, three space. Then after that, I'm gonna take 12, comma, three, four, five, and round the fraction part to two decimal points, which are six and eight. Okay? So here, let's suppose that we have multiple variables. Each of them belongs to multiple data type. As we can see, the weekday is a string, the month is a string, the day is a number, the year is a number. And we would like to print those variables in a way that represent an event. It's Wednesday, March 10, 2010 at 11.45.33. So if I print them this way, what's gonna happen? It's gonna give me an error. Can you tell me why did I get an error? Uh, integer plus string. What's uh, there? It's like uh, integer. In integer and a string. Exactly, because here I'm like I'm concatenating what guys? I'm concatenating an integer to a string, okay? And it doesn't work. So what I have to do, like all of these, I have to convert them to what? To string. Now suppose that I was capable to like you know to concatenate them to like to to a string. So the I. Uh, like convert uh, like uh, the hour to be a string. Then I added this, then minutes, I convert it to a string. Remember the string constructor will convert the number to a string and that's it. Then I was capable to print this. But the thing is I wanna add at, and sometimes I wanna add what a separated, uh, a separate, like a separation with a comma. So, it's very hard, don't you think so? So suppose that I wanna do it by calling the each variable here, weekdays, it's already a string, and concatenated with month, which is already a string, then I, like, you know, I concatenated with day, uh, with day then, uh, then I concatenated with the year by converting the year, but still I have like an error here, I will get an error. Can you tell me what's the error here? Where did I miss here? Yeah. I missed a plus here okay. before str second. Isn't it that the case? Because str minute, let, look at this. Up to this line, I don't have any issue. Then after that, I'm gonna concatenate it with at and the hour, no problem and then concatenated with the, with the column, and then concatenated, I have a plus to concatenate it with the minute, and then I have a plus to concatenate it with the column, but did I, did I insert the plus here? No. no. That's why I got the error, okay? So instead of, and now uh, annoying ourselves with this concatenation, big concatenation, 
line of code, we can use the function format. So the function format will take exactly whatever you specified here and place it at the what curly bracket. So if I said format hour, minute, second, it's and separated by columns, what will happen is we'll take the hour, place it at zero minutes, place it at one, and second, place it at two. Okay. Now we can control the number that we are mapping our like uh, arguments here. So 0, 1, 2, that's the default. But if I say 2, 0, 1, so what will happen is I'm going to take second and place it at the first. Then I'm going to take uh, hours and pla place it like uh, at the second one because it's zero. And second uh, and uh, minute will be placed where, guys? At the last one. That's why it's 33 uh, column, 11 column, 45. The format method to nicely format our string in a way that it will be placed at what? At those placeholders. So hours at the first one, minutes at the second one, and uh, second at the third one, okay? Now, remember that we did not specify the location, so it will, it will go incrementally, but if we specify the location, we will, like, we will go like this. So whatever you specify, here will be represented first. So two, I represented two first, which is second. So zero, one, two, second. I will, you know, I will format the second first, okay? Now, okay, now, since we have this, okay, I will be capable to print my destination, my, 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 targeted, uh, my targeted string using what? using the format. So I will say print placeholder, comma, two placeholders. Okay, so this is March and 10, and then comma, placeholder at, and then I, you know, I have placeholder, colon, placeholder, colon, placeholder, and what? And finally, I end up the string. And then I use the function format. Now, a weekday, sorry, weekday. So what was the, the, the weekday? Okay, it was Wednesday. Okay, so it's gonna take Wednesday first, then comma, then month. What was the month? March. So that was, I put March. Okay, and then I have another, you know, another placeholder without any separated with this space as a, like a separated by a space. So, Day will be placed here, okay? And then year will be placed here, okay? At, then our minute second will be placed at the, the, the three following placeholder, okay? Now, suppose that, guys, I would like to print this table in a nicely way, okay? In a very nice way. If I use, you know, like the four here, and at each four, you know, like uh, like I print, like uh, here I print the headers, okay, I, I like to the power two, I to the power three, and two to the power I, and then I use like, you know, the uh, separate sequence here to specify, you know, like there is a tab between all of them, what will happen is all of them will not be aligned, okay? Because after I, look, suppose, okay, now, like, why did I stop at 13? Because, like, you know, I want to iterate up to from 1 to 12, okay? But this, if I executed this line of code, this is, this is the print because, you know, like, I will not be able to, like, when I have, like, uh, two more digits and three more digits, you know, I will not be able to like, you know, the, uh, like uh, to align them with the column itself. So in order to solve this problem, we can use the function format, okay? And the function format will specify the what? The, uh, like uh, the space itself. So like, suppose that I have the four I in range one to eight, 
And instead of, you know, like instead of, you know, printing them in, you know, in like a shifted way, uh, function method can be used to line up the data in the current, okay? So what will happen is I'm gonna print I at the first placeholder, then I'm gonna print I to two at the second placeholder, then I will print like two to the power I at the third placeholder, and each time I'm adding two spaces, and then here I'm adding three spaces, okay? Like to specify that I have two digits here, and then I have three digits here, okay? So this will give me like two spaces for I to the power two, and this will give me three spaces for two to the power I. Because as you can see, the second column has a max of two numbers, the third column has a max of three numbers, okay? And I plus the blank space between those columns, okay? Now, like suppose that I would like to evaluate this. So here, like, you know, how many spaces I'm gonna have? I'm gonna have three spaces. So that's why when I say the 12, look at this. I have an empty space at the beginning. And here, what I have, the second placeholder will have five spaces. As such, we have two empty spaces. Okay, so basically we have a list that contains multiple strings and what, what we are doing here, we are doing, we're using the for loop in order to go over each item in that list, which is a string, split it into a sub list at which each sub item in that list is the first and the last name. So as you can see guys, the first and the last name are printed in a way that are not aligned. So let's suppose that we would like to align the names to the left in a very nice way at which the first name is printed in one column and the second name is printed to the second column. So by looking at the maximum number of characters at the first column, which is the case of Allen, Allen has four and Vent has four characters, so we would like to give five spaces to the first column. And for the second column, we have Thompson, and Thompson has six, so we would like to add like 10 spaces for the second column. Okay, so by looking at the, by modifying the print and using the format uh, function, we are adding five spaces for F10 and 10 spaces for F11, okay? So by doing this, we are printing it in a very nice way. At first and last, Bill Gates. So Bill, okay? Okay, so Bill has, I'm gonna print it, and it will be equal, like, you know, I will accommodate how many characters up to 10 characters, okay? So if, my, if I have a big name of 10 characters, I will be capable to print it without having an issue, okay? And even for the last name, Gates, and I will be capable to, like, you know, accommodate, a, like, a, a name with even, like, 10 characters. That's why Bell, and then I have six spaces left from the 10, then Gates, and then I have also, okay, one, two, three, four, five, okay? Then I have here five spaces left. A point of interest that numbers are aligned to right, meanwhile strings or names are aligned to left. It was clear that inside the curly brackets, I can specify the field width. In addition, I can specify the type of output. You know, in two different ways. So F, the fixed point, okay? And B is for the binary, C for the character, D for decimal, X for hexadecimal, and E for scientific. Let's take a look at some example, okay? So N equal to 10 here, and B output the number in binary. So 10, remember what 10 is equal in binary? 1010, zero, one, zero, because this is two plus eight, it's 1010. One, zero, one, zero. Now using 
character. So uh, the Unicode character corresponding to the integer value. Remember the table? So we will map it. What was the Unicode of 10? And it's going to be backslash n. OK? Now, D will give us what? The decimal. So the decimal exactly will be what? The number, but in a string. And the hexadecimal here, it's A. Because 1010, zero, zero, remember, it's in hexadecimal is equal to A. The scientific notation, E, it's 1 to what? Uh, like, uh, to the, like uh, you know, like it's 10 to the power of 1. Therefore, that's the scientific notation of it. So in addition to the field width, the type of output, format function can specify the decimal precision. So that to specify, if I have the curly brackets here, seven, that will be the field width, and two F is like the rounding, okay? The decimal precision, like similar to what? Similar to what I've shown you in the F string, but the format function is more powerful than the F string. So let, let's take a look at this. So uh, five over three, uh, five over three is equal to one point, like multiple six, seven. So I just would like to, you know, to convert it to a nice way, like to a nice string. So what I'm going to do is like specify that I have like, uh, like six spaces and round it to what? To like, uh, like uh, two digits. So therefore, I'm going to take six and seven and round them, OK? And then I have like, then I will have three more spaces, boom, and then I close the string. OK, so we remember the one-way F statement, OK? And I have it explained it clearly. Now, and we, we have covered the two-way F statement. Now. Suppose that I would like to have a multi-way F statement. The most general format uh, of Python F statement is the multi-way, is three or more decision control structure. The most important thing here, guys, like the, uh, the, uh, the order at which the sentence will be executed. So if condition one is it true, then I will execute the what? The indented code block one, and then I will skip everything, OK? If condition one is false, but condition two is true, then I'm going to execute this and escape everything else. How, now, if condition one and condition two are false, but condition three is true, I'm going to execute what if, like, you know, the indented code block three and escape everything else and reach to the indented statement. If no condition is true, I'm going to, like, you know, uh, execute whatever specified at the indented code block of the else. In all cases, I'm going to, like, you know, execute the non-indented statement. Let's take a look at this. So okay, a function here, and the function will take the temperature and will print the semantic meaning of the temperature. Suppose that the temperature is equal to 90. So 90 is equal is greater than 86. Therefore, I'm going to print it's hot, and I'm going to escape everything else and go to goodbye. Now, let's take a look at t is equal to 50. 50 is like this condition is not true. OK, because t is not greater than 86, so I'm going to escape this indented code block. Now, t is greater than 32, so I'm going to, like what? I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to what? I'm going to uh, print this, uh, it's cool, then the non-indented code block, which is goodbye. OK, now, suppose that I have a number which is equal to 20. The first condition is false. I'm going to escape this line. The second condition is false. I'm going to escape this line. And none of the conditions are true. So what I have to do is I'm going to print whatever indented with the else, which is it's freezing, and goodbye. 
knowing that those numbers are in Fahrenheit, okay? So this is the flow chart of the, our function, like our what? Our function temperature. Now, if you notice that, you know, the multi-way if statements can be, what, can be executed with what, guys? With just an if and else. So how we can obtain it, guys, by using a nested if else statement at which the indented code block is another if and else statement accordingly. Let's take a look at this. So if the score is greater than 90, that's something like close to the, uh, like whatever I'm giving you on the assignment. If, if the score is greater than 90, a grade will be equal to A. Else, I'm gonna have an indented statement, which is an another if statement. If the score is greater than 80, then a grade is equal to B, okay? Now, else, another indented, you know, uh, statement, okay? So, score if it's greater than 70 i'm gonna like you know assign grades c so in either way so like suppose that my grade is 95 what will happen i'm gonna get this and i will never go to this because the else is indented with all of these statements because my condition is greater than 90 i will be capable to get a now let's say that i have 75 so 75 is not greater than 90 so i'm gonna skip this line else 75 is it greater than 80 so i have to escape this line now 75 is greater than this uh, the condition is true here so the 75 will be mapped to c and all the indented with the else which is with this f you know Okay, will be uh, will be skipped. Therefore, the grade will be equal to C, and this is the similar way of having the F else. So, if score is greater than ninety, grade will be equal A. LF or else F score is eighty, is B, and so on. So, what is the better way to write it? Is it using? Remember, we would like to write our code in the minimum number of line of codes so that is better okay but remember that you know the first condition has to be executed first if it's true we're gonna go to the end point if it's false i'm gonna check the second condition if it's false i'm gonna check the third condition if it's true i'm gonna go directly to the end point and so on okay so suppose that the score is 70 so i'm gonna skip this skip this and get to this to this point okay this is the this is the condition that's true okay now and then i'm gonna exit the, the escape sequence okay can you tell me what's wrong with this temperature implementation no uh, the print is um, still the inside last... the indent huh that the last uh, the last uh, assignment uh, the print goodbye shouldn't be uh, it shouldn't be there no it's print no. goodbye it's as, uh, like it's indented with the temperature so we're good oh, greater than 86 will be fast then that to next oh the, the hashtag the hashtag no i, I think i think Ali is right like you have to have 86 before 32 because exactly. um, if I put like let's say 100 it's both equal to 32 I mean greater than 32 and greater than 86. Thank you so much so the order in which the conditions appeared in the multi-way F statement is very crucial and important so the problem in this implementation that its score will be printed for all values greater than 32 and the condition here is will never be like what? We'll, we will never reach to that condition. You know what I mean? So like in, in fact, it's hot, will never get to printed no matter how high the value of the temperature. Why? Because the order are, uh, at which the conditions are placed 
is wrong. So 86 has to be up there, okay? So like, let, let's suppose I have 104, my, like my, my, my temperature. So I'm gonna print it's cool, even though it's hot, okay? So how to fix this is to make sure that the multi-way if statement is always mutually, uh, like the conditions at, uh, at the multi-way if statement is always mutually exclusive, okay? So to fix it, we have to rewrite it, to put that statement up there, okay? Any question? All right. Okay, guys. So let's have an example, something similar to uh, the assignment, okay? Because I think I, the class is done. I have to go to work. No, I have 10 minutes. No, we end at 3.50, not, not 4. Okay, so since the class is done, we're going to continue later. Any question, guys? Anybody has a question? Yes, um, I just have one small question. I used in the, the assignment to the LF uh, uh, statement. Can I use it or no? Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. The, the, the new one, this one, the yeah, LF. Yeah. Okay. yeah, LF, yeah, the multi-way FS statement. Yeah, and I'm, I'm having just a small problem. Um, uh, uh, first, uh, in determining the the type of the uh, okay, dark I'm string. gonna listen, guys. Okay, I gave you enough time to explain the type of contract. I explained okay. it multiple of times, multiple of times. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying, is there like a way that I could type it on uh, IDL and find the the type? No, you have to use like common sense. Yeah. So when I ask you, like, you know, here, 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 this function, does it return anything? No, it's none. Okay, what does it take an input? Uh, it takes a number. A number. So number to none. That's the type of contract. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Any question regarding whatever I explained today? Uh, uh, hi, Professor. Could you explain the format function again, like just briefly? Because I, I kind of got lost there. Okay, the format function, you know, like let's take a look at here. So the format function here, let's, let's take a look at this statement. So the format, instead of, you know, like doing a huge concatenation, the format will print uh, like uh, uh, your or convert your string to a very nice uh, string to the way that you would like to format it. So for instance, if we use the format function and we said our minute second, note that our minute seconds are numbers, okay? So we don't need to convert them to what? To class string, okay? Do you, do you, do you agree with me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I would put them in between the um, the squiggly brackets. And in the, the curly colon. brackets, exactly. Yeah. So the first argument will go to the first curly bracket. The second argument will go to the second curly bracket. And the third argument will go to the third curly bracket. Knowing that we did not specify the index. But if we specify the index here, okay, this is the default one if we leave it empty, okay? That's the default one. But if we specify the index, we have to stick by the index. So here at the first carry bracket, what I'm gonna put? The third argument, which is second, okay? Now at the here, I'm gonna put the first argument, which is our, because I have zero. And one, I have to put the, minutes because it's 
the uh, middle argument here, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, also, do we, we, we're supposed to use colon here, not comma? Yes, because, you know, like, the, uh, like uh, uh, you know, like here, look at this. Uh, here, we were capable to use, uh, we would like to print, uh, our goal is to print the whole, you know, event in a nice way at which the hours or the time is uh, represented using the standard timing format. Therefore, that was we use the column, but we can use here a comma, and it doesn't matter, like, because look at this. When we have executed the program here, we use the comma to specify that we have, would like the first curly bracket to be followed by a comma. Okay. Right. So in between, you can use anything, even spaces. Anything. Exactly. Even a space. Okay. You see that? Yeah. So there is two ways to uh, format your string, using the format function or using the F string. Okay. But the F format function is more powerful than the F string. Yeah, because it creates a template for you and you only exactly. have to do this, put exactly. your values in. Okay, exactly. thank you. Okay, any other question? So I have I one question. Oh, you go first. You go first. Uh, this one is a, it's a short one. It's only the, a question for assignment two. Um, question six, it says sorted X, Y, Z. I'm wondering if it's sorted based on the SIE um, chart that we saw in class a few days ago, or is it sorted in a different way? Okay, I told you to consider uh, numbers as well as string. Okay. Okay. I think, okay, I think I understand. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, my question is just, uh, we can, we're allowed to put empty or index in the curving bracket. Is there other things allowed to be put in there? No, that's it. Yeah. It's just index, index or, or, yeah, or empty. Empty okay. will be the default. And uh, like if we use the index, then exactly how we put inside the curly bracket, you know, yeah, uh, how the will be works. printed. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Any other question? Now, if you notice, I did not publish the lecture before because I re explained it today. So do you have any question? Alicia? Hi, sir. Um, do you think you could upload the lectures from last Tuesday, Friday, and then today is after class? Last Tuesday, Friday, you know, what? Like the recorded lectures from last week? I yeah, okay. So a Friday and today is included here. So what I have to do is to upload just the, like uh, the five slides from Tuesday. Okay, thank you. William? Yeah, I wanted to ask for um, question three on the assignment. Uh, it seems really similar to one of the questions we had like in, in our labs, in one of our labs. So would it be like plagiarism if we just took our work from there and reused it? Very similar. Yeah. Like what's the similarity? Uh, it's both sort of rock paper scissors it, yeah like it's both sort of a rock paper scissors game and i i think they both use like the sort of like same execution in terms of uh using the function okay and it was similar to the assignment one but this time it's giving you something different minus one one and one yeah i'm saying it's uh, it's not similar to the first assignment i'm saying it's similar to one of the labs we did okay yeah and there is no problem no, no, okay, no, thank you. no, no, no issue. Caitlin, do you have any question? Uh, yeah, I have so many questions, but I'll wait until everyone has answered or discussed. You know what I mean? Okay. Anybody else? Um, sir. Yeah. I have a question uh, for the lecture. Okay. What was your question? Uh, it's about formatting. The... Okay, so. So uh, I'm confused about uh, what. So uh, if you go back for for a slideshow, it's there's kind of like 
um, in the curly brackets, they're kind of, um, there's like a comma and with a number. And I was wondering what does that represent? Which one? Uh, you can go back. I think it's just um, more, oh, wait, uh, forward. Here? Yeah. No, but I think it's still go back, uh, go f still forward. Here? No, a bit more. Yeah, Here? so this one. So it says, um, so you see the, um, the in the code that there's a curly bracket inside, there's a comma with a two and also a comma with a three. I'm wondering what's that represented. Okay, the answer is right there. Okay, reverse two space for, okay, but- um, well, The I issue think... here, look at this, the issue here, if we print this, it's yeah. gonna be not aligned, okay? So what we have to do is to make sure, okay, how many, how many spaces for I to the power two we need? I to the power two, wait. Um, Three. Yes. And here four. Oh, and, and here's five, okay? Five. Okay. Okay, so what you have to do is to use the format for I to power two, use three digits, three spaces you inside the curly. And I to power three, use four. Uh, uh, like two, uh, two to the power I, use what? And okay. even four here, okay? Okay. And here, because look, this one, how many, like, you know, the first, the first line, how many digits we have? One. One. So that's why we did not specify any space. Okay. For this one, how many one? Two. How many did, so we specified how many? Two. Two spaces. And for the third one, to be printed nicely, how many? Three. Three. That's why I put three. Therefore, okay. it's printed nicely. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, any other question, guys? Uh, yeah, sir. The assignment, is it due on um, the 8th or the 15th? Because it says next Friday, but this Friday would be the um, the 8th, which is, what it's, which is when it says it's due. This Friday. Okay, all right, thank you. So a quick question about the about this page. So for the column number, that's different from what we use in slice function, right? That just means the yeah, yeah, fail yeah, yeah. space. Yeah, yeah, it's not a slice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's the fail space one. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Sir, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Did you just say this Friday or next Friday? This Friday. This Friday, all right. So in three days, basically, right? Yes. All right, thank you. Okay, any other questions? No questions? Caitlin, what's your question? Um, I just have a, like a personal uh, matter. Okay, to personal. Everybody else, please leave the lecture. I had one more question, if you don't mind. I don't mind. Tell me. Um, the other question I wanted to ask was, um, I think I think someone else asked it as well, is that like in the assignment, do we have to just do the highlighted ones or all of them? What's that? Um, in the assignment, like the new one, do we have to just do the highlighted questions or all of them? All of them. Okay, and I also want to ask if uh, we have if there's any like restrictions to this assignment in terms of what we can use, like the last one, or no? Just don't use nested loops. Nested loops. Okay. Okay. What, like, could you explain nested loops, like what they are? Like a uh, four inside four. Ah, I see. Okay. You see, you see what I mean? And guys, like you know, uh, yes. Uh, something important, yeah, it's the is digit, okay? You know, so you know the is digit? 
So let's suppose that S equal to, uh, yeah, I did not explain it. S equal to 19, okay? That's in Coursera. I, I, I and you're showing your screen. What? I'm sorry, I don't think you're showing your screen. Okay, one second. I see, like typing. Okay, one second. Share screen to. Okay, s equal to 19, and I would like to use the function s digits, okay? S. So this will give me true because my string is a number. Okay? Now, let's do this and convert this to 198. Okay? And re-execute this line. What's going to give me? It's going to give me false because the str.isdigit method will uh, will validate if your string is based on numbers or not. Okay? False. Now, even if I have a minus number, okay, minus, and I did the same thing, this will give me false. Okay? You got what I mean? Is it clear? So it's a special method to make sure that your string is basically a decimal number. And it will return the Boolean. So it's going to be either true or false. So here, because our string was equal to, let's say that A is equal to uh, 192, OK, as a string, OK? And if I did type A, you check that it's still what a string, okay? But if I did S digit, like STR is digit A, it's gonna return it true because A is literally just a number and can be converted using what? Using if I say integer, just A, will be able to convert it to an integer, okay? I hope this is clear. Okay, anybody, if you don't have the questions, I'm gonna ask you to leave. If you do not leave, I'm gonna like uh, uh, remove you from the course, like remove you from the Zoom. Yeah, I just had a quick question and it might have already been asked, but um did you upload the lectures for tuesday friday and well just tuesday and friday well friday i re-explained it today okay because like in a friday like i you have asked me so many questions to the point that i only explained four slides that's it so what i'm gonna do is upload this to override uh, the slides for friday uh, for the lecture for Friday and the slides and the recording for Tuesday, it's already there. Oh, okay, we can find it. All right, thank you. All right, guys, I'm gonna stop recording.